Is your old game controller starting to show its age? Maybe you want to customize it to show off your personality and tastes. In this video, I'm going to fix and customize an old PS4 controller to bring new life to it. Welcome to Hard Firm Soft, bringing you guides and ideas for DIY projects. Today, I'm going to finish a project that I started some time ago. I had this PS4 controller that came with the console just sitting around because the joysticks were in a bad shape. The joysticks in the first batches of PS4 controllers were notorious for degrading very quickly. I'm going to show you how to take the controller apart, sand, clean and paint all the parts and then put it all back together. Since the joysticks were worn and also one of the buttons was feeling a bit mushy, I started by ordering a few sets of metal joysticks and a bottom membrane set from Amazon. I wasn't sure of the color scheme I wanted at that point, so I decided to order a few different colors of joysticks. Once those arrived, I had settled on an orange and blue color scheme. I had blue joysticks and also wanted to have the buttons in a similar color. I needed orange paint for the controller body and dark blue for the buttons. To have a smooth and lasting finish, I also want to use a clear coat on top. I'm using regular spray paint here, nothing special. Any generic spray paints that work on hard plastics are fine. First we need to take the controller apart. Because I started this project some time ago, I unfortunately didn't film it. You need to remove the four screws on the back of the controller and then start working around the seam of the controller to get the two halves apart. You need to be careful because the snaps on the inside of the controller are quite fragile. After that, there's a whole lot of small parts and electronics that need to be taken apart. There are a bunch of videos on YouTube for disassembling a PS4 controller that you can go to for more details. Next, we're going to need to sand and clean every part we're going to paint. Here it would be fine to use the buttons as is, but I wanted to have them colored as well. I use a 320 grit sandpaper to rough up the surface of most of these parts. The controller bottom part had a textured finish, so I've used a rougher 180 grit paper to get the texture smoothed out first. I'm taking a bit of a risk with sanding and painting the touchpad. I think it should work fine after sanding and through a thin layer of paint because it is a capacitive touch device. So few games actually need that functionality that I'm fine with the risk this time. Cleaning the parts is very important, otherwise the paint will stick to the dirt and oils and the paint can come off quite easily. First we'll want to use some soapy water to get all the dust moving and then rinse the parts with water. The bigger parts are easier to clean in the sink, but you don't want to lose any buttons in there. Now that we have our parts cleaned, dried and ready, you'll first want to consult your paint can to know how long you should wait between coats of paint. The paint I'm using needs 15 minutes between coats. I'll paint the body parts in orange and the smaller parts in blue. It's important to move the spray over the part in one smooth motion. You also don't want to put too much in one coat, otherwise the finish might get uneven. And now it's time for the clear coat. I'm using a matte clear coat because it won't show imperfections as easily. Then I waited about two days for the paint to dry. Let's take a closer look how the finish turned out. From a first glance it looks really good to me. The orange color is very even through most of the parts, but some of the edges are noticeably darker. Smaller blue parts are not nearly as important because they are darker and smaller, but they look good as well. Since we have all our parts ready now, it's time to put the controller back together. Let's start by getting the easier half of the controller ready, the bottom half. Insert the USB port and light bar circuit board. It needs to be aligned to the two small posts in the controller body. Screw in the two small screws to fix the circuit board in place. Insert the frosted plastic part in the light bar hole. Align the curved transparent part with the light on the circuit board and the light bar. Put this white part and this black part in the slots next to the light bar. 
screwing the two slightly longer screws to keep these parts in place. Already the bottom half of the controller is ready and now to the top half. First insert the main buttons. Then put in the rubber membranes for those buttons. Insert the PlayStation button and the membrane for it. Put in the options and share buttons. Then we can move the touchpad in place. Now we'll start working on the main circuit board assembly. I replaced all the membranes on the controller even though only the square button had an issue. Carefully put in the joysticks. I noticed I had broken one of the vibration motor wires, so I had to fix that. I stripped a bit of the broken wire, removed the old solder and wire strands from the circuit board pad, added new solder to it and soldered the wire back in. Next, insert the membranes for the bumpers and triggers. These take a bit of finessing to get into place. Now we can put in the triggers and bumper buttons. The bumpers are easy to slot in place, but the triggers are a bit tricky. You need to put the spring into the axle of the trigger and gently move the trigger into place. The spring also needs to go into the slot in the frame. The triggers snap into place with a firm push. Now we are ready to put the main circuit board assembly into the top half of the controller. Connect the touchpad ribbon cable to the circuit board. Put in the battery frame. There are clips on the sides that you might need to move to get it to snap in. Remember to add the reset button to the corner. Screw in the circuit board to the top part of the controller. Put in the battery and connect it. Now connect the ribbon cable from the bottom half to the main circuit board. The contacts in the cable should be pointing to the center of the controller. Then we can start putting the halves together. The hardest part is getting the triggers through the holes. But it is doable as long as you have a bit of patience. Just continue carefully moving the halves together and you should have your controller in one piece in no time. The last thing is to screw in the four screws on the bottom. These need to be fairly tight for the controller seams to keep closed. And that's it! Looking at the finished controller, I'm really happy how it turned out. Let's turn it on and make sure it works. It seems to be working just fine in-game. The controller actually feels better in the hand. The paint has a rougher texture that I actually prefer over the original. Taking a closer look at the finish, while it mostly looks good, there are some areas where the orange paint isn't covering the black plastic completely. There is also some orange peel effect happening, but it's not really that noticeable and I, I really don't mind. I do have to point out these imperfections are slightly easier to see in person than on camera. This project taught me that it's really important to be able to move the parts while painting and to be able to paint it from any direction. Next time I'll be planning more to make that happen and it'll make it easier to get a good finish. So what do you think of the results? What colors would you use? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching Hard Frame Soft. If you enjoyed this video, hit like. If you want to see more DIY projects like this, hit the subscribe button. See you next time.